Now I'm going to be like. You're okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm your host, Small PP Andrew. This is my wife, Fly <sighs> Tessie. Yeah. We do. <laughs> we decided to uh not include episode numbers anymore just in case we want to record out of order so this is an episode an episode an episode yep we have an intro yeah we've had an intro and outro the whole time so they either just heard us talking about the intro or they didn't. And then they came back to me saying, yeah, we've had an intro the whole time. <laughs> so. So. Welcome to the Small PP Podcast, where we talk about small PP things. I want to, but before, before we jump into any topics, um, I wanted to show you this. It was interesting. This is in our YouTube channel analytics. So for research, this is giving us stuff based on our audience. Read it. Read it out loud. If he has a penis, he is evil. We need to kill all men. Words only. World only. Oh. Sorry. Apparently I'm <laughs> blind today. World only needs women. Okay. <laughs> Did you see the channel names too? Manosphere, Man Guide, Man Reacts. <laughs> all the thumbnails are all women. So are they women led channels that are talking about men's subjects? What do you no, think? No, I don't think so. We'll have, to, we'll have to look them up after this. I'm pretty sure they're mansplaining Maybe. how these women are so stupid maybe this background looks like uh rogan's set so it looks like she's on rogan's set i don't know i don't know who that person is either so i don't know any of these people oh yeah i don't know who any of these people are at all anyways anyway um if you're listening on itunes which 69 percent of you are that's his favorite number by please leave way. a rating and can you leave a review? I don't know if you can leave a review too, but leave a rating. It's all 69% of you. That'd be nice. It'd be awesome. Get us trending. Um, now that that's out of the way, I could probably just close. Do I need that? No, I don't need that. Let's close, Let's close that. Um, we're trying some new settings again. Slightly different. We rolled the intro after we talked. So a lot of people, I've noticed this for a while now, and I just haven't cut up the clips to be able to do it, but I want to get some of you laughing and cackling and nice cleavage shots. Don't you guys love how he says that my laugh is a cackle? No, it's not a cackle. It's actually kind of funny. The bar for the overlay goes yeah. literally right over. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you did that on purpose so that no. they were for your eyes only. No, I was trying to do it so that it kind of looked like professional look like you know like a news no, I, ticker i definitely believe that you did it on purpose eventually you could see my boobs uh, no eventually we'll put other stuff down there like maybe our our sponsors only fans, yeah our sponsors but also so people want to sponsor us and yeah. fill in my boob area yeah our yeah. only fans link <laughs> so anyways so anyways we um try we're trying out some new settings i'm trying to do some of the what I would normally have to do in post processing, try to do in broadcast to make your life a little bit easier after. Yeah, that way when I go and get the transcript and everything like that, the audio kind of lines up correctly with what we're actually saying. It has been so far, but I've had to tweak it to do that. And now that the intro will be part of the original video, it should. Be more accurate and I won't have to do anything. But we'll see. I did walk in on you while you were doing your transcript one time and I noticed that it doesn't pick up my name properly and it just picks up the no. Oh, it just depends. It depends on 
it, it it'll go back and correct itself sometimes it's all ai generated so it learns over time as well but i also haven't gone through and actually corrected i know the transcript isn't uh, fully accurate but that's a there's a multiple or multitude of reasons one of the reasons is because our microphones are essentially going in as one input even though we have two discrete microphones so it's trying to differentiate who's speaking based on the sound of our voices. However, we talk over each other sometimes, so it doesn't know explicitly who's speaking in that moment. It was really hard for me to not talk over him to prove him right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so um, I need to stop saying so um and um. I can actually eliminate that in one foul swoop in the transcript. I thought about doing it, but... You, you can eliminate it simply by keeping your mouth shut. Yeah, true. You also have to indicate now on YouTube if something has been uh, altered by AI in any way or if it... Ice maker. Hey, I think the ice maker's working now. That'll make Chloe happy. Mm -hmm. I took the whole thing out and put it back together. Uh, I was going to do that, but I didn't. Well, I did it for you. You're welcome. That's a... Uh, my normal, my normal daily reasoning. I was going to do it, but I didn't do it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Diddy thing, let's jump into that real quick and then okay. we'll, we'll do our, our thing. From what I read, three different homes, okay. FBI and uh, Department of Homeland Security, sex trafficking. And okay. they've implicated Cuba Gooding Jr. as well as a co-defendant. Oh my! So we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that because that's all I know. I, mean, I just thought hasn't he been in a lot of Disney movies? So Disney's probably gonna cancel him. Cuba Gooding Jr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I feel like he hasn't acted in a while. He kind of yeah, disappeared. Yeah, for... I, I I agree, but I'm sure they're still gonna have to put out some sort of statement. We no longer work with him. Blah blah blah. I I would if if it was more recent, like. Um, Jonathan Majors. Who's that? Kang. Um, what else would you know him from? He's the guy that played Kang in Loki. Okay. Yeah. And Ant Man. They so Disney has removed him. He was supposed to be the next like what did he, do? he uh supposedly or did, I don't know. I don't remember if he was actually if he actually lost the trial or not, he abused some woman in like a taxi or something. I don't know. Oh, my. Lovely. I don't know all the details. And the channels that I subscribe to that talk about like pop culture, mm -hmm. they've all tried to stay away from it because they don't want to throw in, they don't want to be part of the, what's that called? The opinion or court of public opinion mm -hmm. so unless it was pertinent to something else that was like important or pressing or them finally saying okay yeah we're we're cutting him he's not going to be involved in future projects so they're going to recast him however since he was already kind of a character and they've already established that characters across different universes can look different and be different it was basically seamless gotcha we'll see how it goes disney's been fucking up everything with regards to marvel movies and stuff tv shows recently they've gone with the create as much content who cares what it looks like and then latch on to what people like and enjoy which doesn't work and they don't you would think at this point several years into all these studios experimenting you would think that they would finally understand that cut out the internal bureaucracy and just make what the fans actually are asking for. You can go and look on social media, Twitter, Reddit, wherever else that's publicly available, not just, you know, Facebook where somebody might just have their profile turned off. There's plenty of people out there that create uh, fan movies, fan videos, fan art, and there's people that jump onto it like, oh, yes, this would be awesome. I wish the studio would do this. And then they do the opposite. And then nobody likes it. And then they cancel projects before they ever even 
Their um, Batgirl, Batwoman, one of the two, okay. was canceled by DC. Mm-hmm. They basically, they filmed, edited, did everything with the movie, and then just... Who was in it? I don't know. And it never made it to not only theaters, yep. but even just direct to stream? Yep. yep. They used it as a, essentially a, a, a loss for tax write-off. So they could say the, the studio lost X amount of money on the production of the project. But it was simply because they didn't listen to their fans and make what yeah. and now the this world whole, wanted. Yeah, now the whole reboot, you know, James Gunn's supposed to be getting his way, but we haven't really seen his first. We've only seen the end of the previous era. We haven't seen the start of the new era. Flash was one of the last movies and then the new Aquaman movie. And what they, do you mean by era? So all those movies that tie together, like the MCU and the DCEU is what it was called, those movies all connected and shows connected in some way. Some of them didn't, but a lot of them did. They started in the last couple of years or so, especially when Disney Plus spun up. They stopped creating projects that went onto other channels that didn't. They might have had characters that spun off from a movie, but then they would say it's not connected. Anything that happens over here has nothing to do with what's happening in the movies. Then they started releasing the shows that directly tied in. DC kind of jumped on the same thing. They tried to make a connection with the Flash TV show by bringing the Flash from the movies in because they're two different actors. And then I remember how much you loved that. The Flash TV show is trash. I know. I was being sarcastic. Trash. Gumby is what it looks like. I remember. Stop motion. Gumby. Trash. Yeah. I hated it. I remember. I just wanted to fill the fans in as to how much you love it. Yeah. And if Ezra Miller wasn't such a douchebag. What's wrong with him? Abuse. See, I'm just sensing a theme here. That I don't like bad people? No, that Hollywood is full of (laughs) terrible humans. Yeah, basically. And they continue to do this stuff because they get away with it for long enough that they essentially get brazen they think that they're never going to get caught and then they do and then it's this massive or 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 there's the uh uh, you know this fish is too small to fry for us we have to let it escalate before we put a stop to it which i mean then you get to like epstein levels and Mm -hmm. jelaine maxwell i think it's how you jizz lane (laughs) maxwell I honestly do not know how to say her name, but... I think it's Jelaine, but saying Jizz Lane sounds more I feel like saying both of their names is like saying Voldemort. It's just something you're not supposed to say. Why? Why? What's oh, Voldemort? Sorry. That's a reference for all of our Harry Potter fans. You don't understand that because you've never seen Harry Potter or read Harry Potter. Nope. Also never seen... What's the other one? Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He's so uncultured. I've seen Game of Thrones. Yes, and the promise that you made was that if I sat through all of Game of Thrones, you would sit through all of Lord of the Rings. I'm still waiting three years later for that promise to be fulfilled. Since we're we're basically going to be talking about pop culture because we were going to talk about that apples don't fall. Mm -hmm. What do you think of all the reboots and remakes and live action reboot slash remakes? Do you think it's cool because of nostalgia? Do you think you wish they would there would be more original projects? Give me a specific example, please. I just saw this morning that Bad Boys 4 is coming out, and Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are going to be in the movie again. As what, grandparents? I don't know. But they both, they both retired in the last movie and in the second movie. Martin Lawrence is, like, retired, I believe, in all... All three movies. And then he gets dragged back in by Will Smith for whatever reason. And I, I love the Bad Boys movies, but I knew that in three they were gonna they were trying to make it into a franchise because they brought in all those new actors and B list actors that they were trying to prop up as like the next wave, the next I think I only saw saw the first two. I don't even know if I knew that there was a third one. Yeah, there's a third one. Reggie came back. The kid that knocked on the on Martin Lawrence's door to take his daughter out. 
What's get... the one where they go to Cuba? Second one. Okay, so that, that was... Well, the... Did they go to... Their... They might have gone there twice. I don't know. No, maybe it was all in Miami in the first one. I don't... I think so. And then the second one, I think they go to Cuba. And yeah. that's, I believe, the last one that I've seen. I didn't even know. There was another one after that. Yeah, it came out either right around or right before, or maybe right after Mayu. I don't know. came out sometime in the last five years. Okay. <laughs> You'd probably recognize some of the faces for their quote unquote replacements. They were trying to, it, it's one of those, um, the youth is here and they have all these new thoughts and ideas, but the old school method is still better. And so it was that back and forth struggle between well, the two. I know that you made me watch the first two. I'd never seen them. So maybe you made me watch the first two to watch the third one, and I fell asleep for the third one because you no, just no, made no. me power no, watch no, no. <laughs> way too many movies in one day. So I'm actually, I mean, I'm actually kind of excited for it. Hopefully it's actually decent because okay. at least they're both coming back and reprising the roles. If it was the true just essential spinoff, right. I wouldn't be as happy about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll say that as a whole. I, I think fully rebooting movies and pretending like the first one didn't happen 20 years ago or 40 years ago, whenever it happened, is kind of silly. Like all the Wonka movies that have been made There's, and redone with different interpretations. There have been some franchises where... And I, I, there's a recent example of this, and it's eluding me right now, where they made three or four or five movies, and then the one that came after the most recent one, whatever that franchise was, essentially acted as if the second most recent one never happened. I Basically, would, I would need a, changed the entire. I would need an example. Canonical story. I, I can't think of it all the time. I know, I know it's happened. I know it's happened recently. So are you saying like um, trilogies that have occurred and then prequels and post? No, 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 no. no. Like an entire Avengers movie, like oh yeah, I've... series or whatever, and then they come in in one movie. I think Marvel, DC, and what Sony as a whole, they all just kind of is that Marvel remake have... and remake and remake. They haven't re Marvel hasn't remade yet. Marvel's continued continuing a single story essentially they're telling from i just different, can't follow that story they're, they're telling overlapping storylines from different locations and different perspectives sometimes the same timeline sometimes different timelines there's not really much that's happened that we've watched other than dr strange 2 that's happened i didn't watch that i meant people in general oh. so dr strange 2 occurs Across a multiverse. It's hard to follow when you're talking about we. We would yeah. be me and you. But there are some like tangential projects, things that are supposed to tie together, like Venom. Canonically, technically, Venom is part of the MCU because he interacted with Spider-Man in the post credit scene. But Spider-Man's part of the MCU, not in the... Sony's calling it like their, their Venom verse or something like that. They're trying to make Venom the anti hero main character of the entire franchise. Okay. And then you have other things that are actually, um, X Men is one of the good examples where they just kind of ignored plot lines from certain movies, but they say that they occurred in different timelines or whatever. And now you have the multiverse stuff. But now they're coming into the MCU. That's did that movie come out already? Deadpool three or is that next month? I thought it was this month. Maybe it's tomorrow. What? Maybe. Here, let me search it up okay. for you. I I would assume that it's a summer release or um, Memorial Day. All right, uh, Deadpool three. While she's looking that up, release date. Are you guys excited for July twenty sixth? Ooh. Yeah. I, Big big movies usually come out middle of summer or Christmas. They have they they have cadences now for certain entries and certain projects. So it's not only the July and December anymore. January, February is also one of their it's typically February 
But all the Deadpool movies, I believe, up until this one have come out in March or April. I wouldn't know. Uncultured. I know. So uncultured. But they also, they they tend to schedule their projects that they think have the potential to bomb for their February release. That's Those are the movies that they're like, eh, that's borderline. Maybe it'll be successful, but we don't want it to overlap with any other main franchise because they don't want to compete with each other either they don't want to compete with other studios projects because they want everybody going to the movie only to watch their movies only to watch their right movie. like barbie and oppenheimer last year but they did a good job doing the co-marketing campaign the barbenheimer people were hyped about going to both of them and they you mean how oppenheimer asked barbie to not release on that date i don't know anything about that yeah christopher nolan you mean and Barbie said, fuck you, we're releasing, and that was completely also, took over. That was also during their strike, and they weren't really, I, I don't know the details or semantics, but from what I understand, they're not supposed to do like any kind of work, including promotional work, during a shutdown. I wouldn't know. So they didn't promote the movie actively. It was the audience was doing the promotion for them and then they were just passively engaging somebody would post something and then one of the actors would come across and be like this is cool and they would reshare it because they're not getting paid to do that they just are acting like normal people in that instance however it does financially benefit them in the long run to continue engaging with their audience they're just not going on press tours they're not going on all the talk shows they're not going on podcasts to talk about everything because that's they, you know, they have to hit all those different things, all those different avenues. You're saying Margot Robbie did no press at all? During that, whatever that period of time was, yes. They did nothing official, nothing was paid for. I'm pretty for. sure that's incorrect. Look it up. I will. Ask, say, did they promote during the shutdown or something along like that? I was specifically going okay. to look up Margot Robbie. Okay. So, while she's looking that up, do you guys have any movies that you're looking forward to this year? Or, I'm just going to put the camera on you while you're looking it up while I'm talking. <laughs> Multiple, July 13th. That's news articles. You, right, a, okay. Actual interviews. They did not conduct actual interviews. For Vogue. This is a the day, full the day article. That, the day that it's published is not necessarily when the interview was conducted. They could have content pre-scheduled um, and interviewed. All right. Ask, ask it specifically I'll, if they I'll did. I'll ask it specifically about like the Today Show because that would be a specific. Did the actors for Barbie and Oppenheimer do the press tour in 2023 cut me off in the weeks leading up to the simultaneous release of greta gerwig's barbie and christopher nolan's oppenheimer the movie directors and stars have been taking time out of their press tours to promote each other's movies even this is july 20th which i believe even knowing their long publicity march has likely was likely to be truncated by the screen actors guild that's where it cuts off So it says that they did, but they did it cross-promoting. They want to talk about each other's movies, not the movie that they were in. As, I guess, more or less a loophole. It answered the question based on how you asked it. I. You were looking for that answer. I asked the AI to aggregate everything. Okay. You were looking for that answer, so it found that answer for you. That's not how that works at all. Okay. But yes. It produced she was it, on the Today Show. It produces in citations July. Talking about Oppenheimer. Promoting Oppenheimer. If anybody would like to produce the Today Show clip, I'm not where saying she I'm not saying there's not clips. talks about Oppenheimer. I'm not saying there's not clips. They they don't film the content when you consume it. They might have filmed it in December. That's how Hollywood works. Everything is done out of order. 
just like how you don't watch the podcast episodes, most actors don't watch their movies and TV shows. They don't consume their own product. And they do, they do stuff out of order because you have actors like Mark Ruffalo and some others that essentially spoil things on purpose, on accident, who knows. So they give them multiple versions of variants of scripts and they film multiple versions of variants of the scripts. And then the actors don't actually know what's going to appear in the final cut. It's only the editors and director and producers and stuff that know what's going to make it into theaters. So if they accidentally slip up on a press tour and say, my character did this or that, that might've been something that they filmed, but it's not actually canonical to the movie or TV show that they produced. Okay, yeah, that's fine, but a morning talk show is not filmed six months ahead of time. You'd be surprised. Maybe not six months, two, three, yeah. They could already be doing something, promoting something else, and be off in between projects. And they go and get interviewed about the project that's getting ready to be released. And then, of course, they're asked about the upcoming project. There's all kinds of variations to, to how it works. The press tours sometimes happen all in line with the release. There's different pockets and periods. There's somebody out there, that some bean counter out there is looking at all the... I'm sorry, what did you just say? A bean counter? Yeah. So and they, what is a bean counter? Your accountant, CPA, people in charge of your money. The people that want to make money make more money. They don't actually care about the quality of the project. They just want more money. I've never heard an accountant referred to as a bean counter. Yeah, that's from the abacus days. Okay. That's what that's from. That's a normal comment. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <clears throat> See? So, why don't you introduce the audience to our latest binge watch series? Are all the episodes out? Do you know? I believe so. Okay. All I know is you don't it's a mini series. You don't end up where we catch up and then there's like one in two weeks. <laughs> no, I th I think the whole mini series was released by Peacock at the same time. I don't what? know that for sure because I haven't flipped ahead. What method do you prefer? Do you prefer the all at one time? You want all at one time? Oh, I do not want released once a week. They do that to keep you subscribed. Yep. No, thank you. But that's probably going to change soon because um, I think the FTC is going to start requiring. I think I told you about this a while back. They they want to require prorated disconnect charges for everything. Okay. So right now, if you go and cancel a subscription. You've already paid for the full month in, and instead it of, canceled. Yeah, instead of gi giving you. Instead of giving you the prorated refund, it makes you run all the way through the end. There's some psychological aspect to that because sometimes you have to go back and reconfirm. And if you don't, oh, you subscribe again. I guess you're staying for another month. Mm -hmm. But they also don't want the mass wave of people that only subscribe for one show to cancel it immediately 24 hours after they've started their binge watch of the series. Because there are, or maybe not anymore, but there used to be money back guarantees like 24 or 72 hours so you could theoretically go on there and binge watch an entire series and cancel and get all your money back and you've I can't already... think of a single service that offers a money back guarantee not anymore, anymore but it also depends on how you subscribe if you subscribe to certain app or in-app purchases like on google play for example it'll tell you that you have 24 hours to reverse the transaction and one of the points to that say for example <clears throat> your kids subscribe to something on your phone because they know your pin or password or mm -hmm. something like that and you don't catch it right away you can go back and say hey i didn't do that my kid accidentally did it there were some lawsuits i believe with apple and itunes involving that several years back where kids were purchasing things in app because it was too easy there was no there was no intermediary like and I believe the Fire tablets through Amazon, that was a huge Probably. thing because you have to have your card attached to it. Yeah. And children were downloading like hundreds of dollars of games. Yeah. So 
the company is trying to protect itself from all these chargebacks. And in addition to that, consumers need protection from themselves and their technology illiterate family members. Think not just kids, but even, you know, you could have a situation where we're taking care of your dad. Imagine your mom is on a stint out of country or something, and we're taking care of your dad. Do you think that your dad has all the time, is lucid enough to make the cognitive decision to subscribe to things, or is he just clicking accept, 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 accept to get to what he wants? Accept, but luckily my mom does have preventative preventative measures in place to prevent that from happening. One of the things that we probably need to do, I already do it, not for everything, but I already do it, is I use uh, virtual cards from privacy.com. So you can set specific services to a card. So if I wanted a Netflix card, it'll only Netflix. And you can also set, set limitations for monthly or whatever reoccurring transaction period. So if you have an annual subscription, you know what that dollar amount is. You can say, I only wanted to spend $12 a month on Netflix and nothing else. So even if somebody accesses that virtual card number, they can't use it on something else and they can't even spend outside that $12 limit. You could do something like that for pretty much, because you can have a general card where you have a spending limit, let's say $100. If we said the kids were allowed to spend $100 a month on games and add-ons, you burn through that $100. I'm I'm throwing out a number. Every, games are expensive. Games are Which ex- is why I don't pay for any games yeah. for my children. Well, I'm the that. mean mom. But we're doing it the worst way in, in some ways. There are people, Nintendo, for example, is one of the worst. Nintendo does not want you to own anything. They don't want people to have retro devices anymore. They want you to have to pay a subscription to pay play all the games that you loved from your childhood on current devices. They want to keep you locked in, keep you continually paying. They sue the ever-loving shit out of everybody that finds a way to create a device or software emulators, things like that, that allow people to play the games that they bought 30 years ago, that they own. They have the physical media copy of. Nintendo will come after you and take everything if you try and use it. Oh my. So because people, it, there's so much friction now to things like that. You used to be able to get, used to be able to just play Super Mario right in the browser. There were websites that, that you could go to. Nintendo's sued them and taken them down. Nintendo's sued all the different software manufacturers. There was just a story the other day about a similar thing happening where Disney, or not Disney, I mean, they probably do too. Nintendo has even sued theme parks that have Mario Kart for their go-kart track. And it's gotten entire theme parks shut down over it. There was an organization that did these traveling racing experiences where they would like shut off, just like any of these running events like Ironman, that's not a local thing to Wilmington. That's a national brand that maybe even international that travels around. These guys would bring in these go-karts and block off a bunch of city streets and turn your town into a mini Mario Kart track. And you would wear the costume and yeah. And they went after them for that. I mean, there's, there are, Copyright infringement, right? So, um, well, there's there is a ask permission. There, there are limitations for some of that. Like, if um, you're marketing an entire event based on that, characters, the, and... the the Grinch thing that people were mad about. The photographers were maybe you weren't on social media, so you didn't see this. I don't know why you're talking about the. Whoever owns Dr. Seuss and his books, okay. the I don't know if it's the estate or if it's something else, they were suing photographers for advertising Grinch theme Christmas. This past Christmas. Christmas? Yes. I don't know if it goes back any farther, but yes. No, I, I didn't hear that at all. 
like people are going to come and get their picture taken no matter what. What if I showed up in my own Grinch costume and I wanted my picture taken by the photographer in my own costume that I own that I paid for? I think that because you're one person and you're not going to be making any money off of it. But photographers like to add things to their portfolio portfolios all the time. How many customers are they going to say yes to before they realize I have nothing new to add to my portfolio? I have this big gap in my portfolio because I was working exclusively with potentially copyrighted, trademarked material. So they're essentially scared because they don't want to get in trouble or caught. They might be small now, but they might have just enough content at some point in time that they do come after. So be original. That's how you avoid. But people don't want originality. People want the picture with Santa. They don't want a picture with off-brand Santa. They don't want they don't want Phyllis Santa. They want Michael Scott Santa. I was waiting for you to get there with the off-brand Santa. And that's not a slide against the office or Phyllis. It's just when somebody goes to see the mall Santa, they're expecting an old dude with a beard. Hmm. Right? If, yeah. you, if you took the kids to see the mall Santa and it was a scrawny woman... <laughs> What do you think they would say? Would they comment or would they let it slide? They or would they be like, uh, can we come back on a different day? Yep, exactly. Okay. No, thanks. <laughs> so that's, you kind of have to tread the line then because you either do just enough and hope to never get caught or you do nothing and never build your business. There's probably, somebody probably has, I'm sure, I'm I'm almost 100% positive. There's probably a clothing manufacturer, like a brand that you would wear or like, one of these like really expensive bougie brands. I'm sure that somewhere. I don't own anything bougie. Oh, whatever. I'm sure that somewhere, somewhere. There's a clause that says that if you earn money wearing their apparel, that you owe them some amount of money. I'm sure it's there. I'm sure it exists. And they've probably never gone after people. Or if they have, it's only been famous people because they know they can get them for a lot of money. Uh, I would think actually the complete opposite. And that's why true bougie brands label their shit. So it's literally walking marketing. But there's some bean counter who wants Hence, more. More. It's always more. Why Line I don't go up. own anything Line bougie. Go up. Do you know anything that I have that states the label on it? But you've told me that people know just from looking at your clothing what brand it is. So effectively it's the same thing. Even though it's not spelled out, they know exactly what it is and where you bought it from. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. All of your dresses and... Yeah. Oh, you're specifically talking about my Lily Pulitzer dresses? Yeah. It's based on the pattern, not anything else. And only women, for the most part, know that. Right. But they still... a very small market. But they still know that. specifically Southern women. Okay. I so, can guarantee no Northern woman knows what a Lily Pulitzer dress but is. But every, everybody watching this... Who, and read fuck your sensitivity no, no. Yes. Every, everybody watching this, not everybody's blind like i am apparently everybody watching this that knows who black rifle is knows this is a black rifle shirt and it does not say black rifle it says it on the back on the neck collar or the neckline whatever you call that space right here and Somebody, i only know it's black rifle because you told me it was black rifle it literally says it right i'm saying just from the front alone no like, I, I don't look at that and go, oh, yeah, that's a black rifle shirt. No, it's a fuck your sensitivity on a gray heather shirt. Okay. Now that we've talked about fashion. Yes. 
got you know, very, off, very fashion forward here. We got way off topic here. I do have to check my phone. My mom's been blowing me up. Blah, so blah, 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 blah. Find out what's going on. Something happened at school. While she stares at her phone, I'll put the camera on her and I'll talk. We've been watching Apple's Never Fall. Yes, Apple's Never Fall. And immediately, I started to notice that they were effectively trying to frame Sam Neill's character. What's what's the dad's name? I feel like they only ever say dad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on both the mother and father's name. Yeah. The two, like, true main characters. But they came out being really obvious about it. And the point of this topic in this conversation is because I stopped us on episode two. Mm -hmm. And I specifically said, I don't think he was involved at all. And I said that I think he and, is. And the premise of it was regarding the lying and the stories that he was telling. They never, they, they said multiple times that he walked out on them when they were growing up. Mm -hmm. But they never say anything about mom doing that. However, I believe the ease at which he was saying mom is at the mall or mom is sick or, you know, talking to the neighbor, oh, she's got a head cold. I think he truly believed that she was taking a break somewhere and that she would actually be back. And he didn't want people to think that they were going through a rocky patch because it's his business and none of theirs. That's how I act. That's how I talk to people. When we've had rocky patches, it's none of anybody else's business. If they ask me how you're doing, I tell them you're doing great, even if we just had some massive fight. For the audio audience, she's just staring at me. I don't talk to people about my personal life, especially when the implication is that if things do get better, now people wonder why you're going back and forth. Why are you flip-flopping? Why did you just say that your significant other was this and that, and now you're posting lovey-dovey stuff with them again? Preventing that from ever happening to begin with. Everybody has rocky patches, but there's no reason to air your dirty laundry to other people because then you look like an idiot when inevitably, inevitably you get back together. Fortunately, you and I, and I believe the characters from the show, have never been the, like, go off and cheat, come back, go off and cheat, come back. Like, we've never been those people, and I don't think that's what's going on in the show either. But there's always... You see people that post about how much they love this person that they've met for 13 days. And then 30 days later, they're talking about, I need to find the best custody attorney or divorce lawyer because oh <laughs> they did a Vegas style wedding. And then two months later, you see them post that, oh, we just, we're the happiest family this is the love of my life. I feel like you're telling somebody's story and I want to know who these people are. These are the kind of people that I actually do delete from my social media because I'm like, I, I don't have time for you. I have never seen anything as crazy as what you just described. I'm sure other people have seen the same or similar. Oh my. Yeah, that's... So you have always lived here. You've never moved away. I mean, you were too young in elementary school to really consider that moving away and coming back. Okay. But for for people, I had this I had this conversation when I was getting my haircut, which I need to get my haircut again. Hunter, calling you up. Yes, you desperately need a haircut. <clears throat> we, him and I were having this conversation. Mm -hmm. He he asked me cause that was the first time he had ever cut my hair. I had hung out with him previously at like Josh's house years ago, so you know, we'd hung out and drank together. We just were never like good friends. And he was asking about us, how I met you, where you're from, where I'm from, how I ended up here, all those kind of things. I was like, well, I moved away for the army 
and all I ever wanted to do was get back because I thought that I was missing out. You know, all my friends were always posting about the cool thing. It was the transition between MySpace days and the Facebook days as the two most popular, you know, platforms. And at that point in time, there were no real algorithms and everything was actually sequential by, you know, ordered um, by time and date. What do you call that? When you filter or sort something by time. There's a, there's a word for it. Timeline? I don't know. No. I just had the word on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember it again. Anyways, doesn't, doesn't matter. They know what I'm talking about. You only had your friends in your feed. Everybody was using PC. There were no mobile devices yet, so any ads were like in sidebars. They weren't actually in the feed itself. That era. Yeah. So you you were never looking at celebrity stuff. You were looking at what your friends and family were doing. Mm -hmm. My friend's on vacation. My family's doing this without me. My other friend just had a baby. These people invited me to their thing, but I'm out of the country or I'm, I'm deployed or I'm in training and I can't attend it. And it makes you want to go back because you're missing things with the people that you actually care about. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you're like, God, you people suck. You're so you thought for a minute that you actually care about these people only to realize you don't care about anybody? Well, they, what they, were I just heard? they were only posting about which... In a good way. They were only posting about essentially the good things, the cool things. Because That's what social media is. No, people talk about all the bad things now. People want sympathy. That's its transition to that. So, you know I'm right. Everybody's like, oh, I did this. I'm... That's why those posts for the missing grandpa with Alzheimer's or the missing dog that got hit by a car. I just saw another one today or yesterday and I... I always click on the profile. That's what you guys need to do. They're actually not even profiles. They're creating like pages as health and beauty, I think is the category for almost every single one that I've seen. Doesn't make sense to me. There, there has to be something, you know, analytically or algorithmically that's specifically promoting that page type. It's always health and beauty. They're actually using American sounding names the pictures often never match. However, that's kind of something that the elderly, not even just the elderly, but, you know, grandparents and things like that tend to post pictures of their kids and grandkids as their profile picture rather mm -hmm. than themselves. So that's, you know, there'll be like a man's name and then you look at the picture and it's like a woman. So is it their wife or whatever? And clearly it's fake. They'll have, they'll have zero to three followers total. They just created their page yesterday. And the new thing that I saw, and I don't know how new it is, it's new to me, is there was a uh, necklace with like a, it was a heart. And they're trying to say, oh, it's been a week since I found this and it seems to have somebody's ashes in it. I want to make sure it gets returned to the right person. Oh my. The underlying thing that these posts have always been has been to um, spread the post far and wide uh, publicly. And then they'll go back retroactively after it reaches a certain point and they'll change the content within it because now it's buried in your feed. You're not going back to look. And change the content to what? Visit my porn link. Go here. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Visit my scam phishing link. Send me so money. So all the naked girls on your profile were these supposed people? No. I'm talking about actual scammers. So they'll... Okay. They'll go and use grandma's profile picture and then they'll go back after it because you're not going to look back at your feed at what you shared. You, If you saw the missing dog post, chances are you'll share it, mm -hmm. but you're not going to go back and look at your profile in a week and see if they changed the content. But other people, because the algorithm are just shows, now seeing it for the first time. Shows, yeah, shows content out of order, it looks like you just shared somebody's gotcha. porn link or whatever the scam is going on. Okay. It's well thought out and it's very well executed, obviously, because well, people- this is the first I'm hearing of all of it. People so. continue to be dumb enough. It's the exact same thing as the chain emails. If you mm -hmm. don't share this, you're gonna have you're bad gonna luck die. for seven years, yeah. It's the same thing. It's just a variation 
Yeah. Yeah. Going back to the show. Yes, the show. So you don't think he's involved. Nope. All because you can relate to him. It's it's not about relating. It's the fact that I think that he genuinely knows and believes that his wife is on a break for a little while. And I think and, his behavior is just entirely too suspicious. In the most recent episode that we watched, mm-hmm. they were going through the love letters from the person that she cheated on him with. Right. Which obviously happened quite some time ago if he had died five years previously or something. Yeah. So it was possibly while the children were young still. So she's no saint. Right. But he the, obviously was not either. But the girl that they brought into their house. Mm-hmm. Which was, I said from the beginning, I believed was, she was targeting them. Was prying into everything. Yes. The It's not even the questions that she asked, but it's the manner and the phrasing Mm -hmm. it screamed somebody that was trying to get and like those stupid trivia or questions on facebook like phil how many times have you been married what's your favorite vacation spot what's where were you born what school did you go to how many kids do you have questions to possible passwords and security questions okay we're we're saying the same thing in different ways yes well, to get pe- there, people to get are, people are dumb enough to use their family members and and easy to remember passwords. And so, yes, it is probably for the passwords, but you can crack or find because people are also dumb enough to use the same password in multiple locations. Right. So your information could be leaked from Facebook, for mm-hmm. example, and then somebody can get a hold of that and then they can hash the password. I've showed you how this works. Remember I showed you, we typed it in and had to generate the MD5 sum. So they can go and compare it to a leaked hash list. Literally just search and replace. They can copy it, put it in there, search for this. Oh, that same hash popped up in Instagram link or Twitter link. Okay, I know exactly what their password is. And I have this public information that could answer all of their security questions. People don't think because they don't want to believe. They think, oh, it's fun. It's fun. Nobody nobody will ever know. You probably, all of us, all of us have fake bot followers. Everybody does. Even if it was originally. How many people do you think are fake bot followers on our podcast? So, I don't know. I'm not talking about the podcast. I'm talking about specifically our social media accounts. Not only, if especially if your profile is public where you don't have to verify your followers, mm-hmm. where they just can follow you indiscriminately, you have that. That's an issue. But you also have profiles where... Just to be clear, guys, when he's saying you, it's not me. Yeah, he's no. being proverbial in yeah. the you. I don't have social media. So the you also have accounts that were compromised you have people that didn't take their password or account security or they did have two-factor authentication and then factory reset their phone and couldn't get back into it there's all different re- like there are people that potentially died on that you were friends with and their account gets compromised and you don't know it because that person's not posting but that's one way other than api access how a lot of these even private investigators, people scamming. That's how they get the information that they get because they can aggregate everything from all the accounts and locations that they have access to. So you might only ever post privately, friends only, but there's a very, very greater than zero possibility that somebody within your account is scraping everything that you post, saving all of it. There was a video that I watched recently, we're getting off on a tangent here, on Veritasium, where they were talking about, or he was talking about um, information security and why China, Russia, and other, both, even the US is doing it, why we're collecting all of this encrypted data. They can't read it now. They cannot see it now. They can't crack it now. But they hope to soon. It's not hope to, they will, it's when. How long will that take? And then that information becomes useful 
because now they can compare it to new data and information. Is this the TikTok issue that you've seen? Not just TikTok. I, I'm talking in general. Anything that you do on the internet, your emails, literally your phone calls, text messages, they've been in AT&T and Verizon's network for like seven years unnoticed. All of your text messages, the people that you communicate with, your phone calls, everything has been tracked. Yeah. And deleting it from your phone deletes it from nothing but your phone. Right. So like even client information is what's yes. going through my yes. head right now. Why do, you, why do you think I am so strict with people? Don't text me or email me your username and password. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't. People just willy nilly send it in an email and I'm like. Ultimately, I don't really have anybody's private, private information. I don't ask for social security numbers. I, I don't ask for. I make sure that people delegate me access rather than sharing their information with me. Mm -hmm. I make sure that whatever tools I'm using offer those kind of uh, authorizations because I know that that platform, we'll say GoDaddy, for example, a client can delegate me access to their GoDaddy account right. so I can act on their behalf with certain permission tiers. Right. I always make sure that they do not enable purchasing because I don't want to be responsible for something being wrong and them having the ability to blame me for it. In addition to the logs, which show, oh, yeah, no, it wasn't him because it wasn't his IP address. It wasn't him logged in. It was somebody that ac had access to your personal device. It was either you, somebody you know, or somebody that hacked into your device. It's not your reseller, developer, host, whatever. And I'm the only one that's ever acted like this. That's why it bothers me. People will start up a new business, and they'll just willy-nilly throw out their information to people. I'm like, First of all, you shouldn't be trusting people like mm -hmm. that in any sense. Yeah. Back to the show before we close out our show. Apples never fall. Do you think there's a possibility that we actually haven't even met the character responsible? Because, remember, in the opening episode, her boy she left her boyfriend. That's how she got that caught on her head or ran away from him or whatever. They were having a fight supposedly and we haven't seen her in the now we've only seen her in the past interesting theory and what it's one that never crossed my mind that i would assume i would assume the dad would know if they were missing a significant amount of money they did make a point that she came back or whatever and gave 10 grand to the guy. Right. That, and there's no way that she would have given all the money. So 10 grand was definitely, definitely just a portion of what she got from wherever. And I would think that he would have noticed. Either mm -hmm. something would be missing from the house of significant that he value. Gave it to her? No, I don't think, I don't think he's involved with her. I. Oh. think that something may have happened between them and then he felt guilty about it and asked her to leave and here you can start fresh elsewhere with x amount of dollars i don't think so so they've made they've made a lot of things very clear and obvious when the son gave him the pass for wimbledon no for the uh boat slip and oh, said it yeah, gives you yeah. gives you extra access yeah. and this and that. Just don't do what my boss is there. Mm -hmm. The girl was there for that. Mm -hmm. She knew where everything was in their house. Mm -hmm. She was effectively playing a live-in housekeeper. Right. So, but where that money came from is curious. Because I would think that he would notice money missing. So, if it's not money missing, it has to be something of value mm -hmm. that was sold for money, but what do they get out of murdering her, potentially? That well, they keep talking about that one tennis player that fired them, and he's obviously very important and very affluent, so there's a reason why they keep mentioning him, <coughs> and there's a reason why they keep alluding to several innuendos alike, so would small touches that she's... So would you agree that it's all a misdirect at this point? I don't 
don't know. We'll see. It's, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Do you guys think my interpretation about the lying to save face and not air your dirty laundry is right? Or is Nona's interpretation? Or are both of us wrong? Have you watched the show? Have you watched the entire go ahead and, show? Go ahead, and, go ahead and spoil it in the comments. I'm yeah. cool with that. Yeah. I, won't, I won't read it to Nona. Okay. I don't want to know. I want to find out slowly. Okay. On that note, he's wrong, she's right com. We haven't plugged anything. NonaPhelps.com. We should start doing this at the beginning of the episode because people will just turn off as soon as they hear you. Our our talking. our average watch time on YouTube right now is thirty two minutes. So if we don't do it in the first thirty two minutes, people are missing out on it. Yeah. You guys are missing out on our plugs. But plugs, that is. Yeah. Um you hang around. NonaPhelps.com. Plug me. <laughs> no. No. NonaPhelps.com for insurance, LeeMaxMedia.com, the America's Technology Center of Excellence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually really like that brand name. It rolls off the tongue really well. Sounds good. Sounds really yeah. professional. You sound so smart. I do. Big brain. I do. Big brain. Big brain. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. Big brain, little pee-pee. Yep. Yeah, small pee-pee. Oh, sorry. Small, small pee-pee, flat chest, signing off. Okay. Love you. I love you, too. Bye-bye, everyone. See you next time. Goodbye.